we got a clearance for that we're being turned on this morning, and we want to welcome you here to the uh, Montana Baptist Church. And you know what? It's only 18 days until Broomsell Hall. 18 days until Groundhog's Day. So we're moving along. We're in the, we're in the middle of January already. So uh, let's uh, go so fast. I won't mention how many days it is until Christmas. Thank you. <laughs> All right. I want to welcome you here this morning. Welcome to this gathering together this morning to praise and worship God. Anna, you have a, a reading for us this morning. A member of our church gave me a very nice devo devotional for my birthday this year. And on January the 13th, which was Friday the 13th, even though it was a gloomy day, I had a very good reading here that I wanted to share with you. And it's called Give and Get. Uh, and it comes from Proverbs 11.25. A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. So I thought, okay, this sounds like a love gift reading. And here's what it says. You get what you give. It's a simple principle. And one that the Bible endorses. We are not likely, we are not like a takeaway cup that becomes useless once it has been emptied. In God's upside down kingdom, the more we empty ourselves, the more we are filled back up. It can be hard to let go of money, or time, or energy for the sake of others. However, if we understand that God is using us to give to others, we can also trust that he will find a way to provide for us, and he does. Is your tank on empty, needing to be filled up? Do you need refreshing? Be generous and willing to encourage someone in need. There are plenty of people around you if you make yourself aware. As you give, the Lord will return to you. And then there's a little prayer here at the end. Dear Lord, show me the people in my life that need my generosity. Show me those who need my time, my prayers, and my encouragement. As I give to others, please fill me up and restore my soul that I can live a life that is full of you. And I thought, that's love gift. When we drop those coins in our love gift box, we don't know exactly where they're going, but we know they're going to... Help somebody someplace else that's less fortunate than we are. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. Also, you'll notice in your bulletins at the top of the bulletin page, uh, it says sermon scriptures. And we, I decided to have them inserted into the, the bulletin so that uh, we'll be quoting from some of those passages, maybe all of them, depending on how or which way the, the Spirit of the Lord goes. But in the event that you need to uh, follow up on, on a quoted scripture, and it's there for you able to follow along, either now or in the privacy of your own home. So we put them in there for helps for you. And also, uh, coming up this week, tomorrow evening is, at 6.30, is a scrapbooking up at uh, Country Comfort. If you wish to go along, Mary will be more than happy to uh, uh, help you along. And also, we received uh, two uh, announcements, one from, uh, uh, well, both of them from AbcoPad. Uh, the AXE program is starting with a, well, it's already started, but the uh, uh, Old Testament is uh, being offered starting on the uh, March the 4th through, excuse, February the 4th through uh, March the 18th. So it is uh, available to you, and it's, uh, all, everything is done online. You don't have to travel. Uh, I will post this out on the bulletin board if you wish to become a part of that uh, individual Old Testament study. And also from the uh, Adco Pad, is that if you wish to uh, register for a 
mission team for 2023. Uh, there's information here for you uh, to fill out and send in or inquire about if you wish to go on one of the many mission trips provided and, uh, by ABCO. All right. They'll be posted out on the bulletin board for you to uh, gather that information for. On Sunday the 29th, this, which is two weeks from now, we'll have a, a representative from Expectations here uh, to give us an update and also deliver the message on the, the work that, that those folks do, both in Lewisburg and in Williamsport. And it's always, it's always enlightening to see and hear of what they are doing. So that will be uh, the 29th. Uh, Year-end reports are, are overdue, and get them to S Susan, and also uh, coming up, starting in uh, when, Jamie, is the uh, American Baptist Women's Bible Study, uh, Discovering Hope in the Psalms. Do you, would you like uh, to make Anyway, that? I brought my book, and Mary and I got ours on Amazon um, under the gently used, but it's not, the only thing that's used on it was the wrapper was off, probably. There was nothing, it was, and it is online. Um, there's a video to follow, I think once a week for a chapter, but, um, and then the workbook to keep you, I'm gonna really like the Psalms I hope to keep up with this time. I'm not always good, but um, we're hoping that we can encourage each other. So if anybody's interested in doing it also, um, if you don't have internet, we can probably watch it uh, here, like once a week to catch up on it if you'd like to. It won't matter, like on your speed of it. I don't think it's, it'll be nice to do it, but um, anyway, if you're interested, let me know and we'll get, help you get it ordered. Well, like that first video was about 15 minutes. It was, about yeah. 15. And I think the next one's like 20, so it's not a real long. Yeah. If you're interested in those programs, in that program, in that Bible study, See both Jamie and Mary Paul, and they'll get you pointed in the right direction. Coming up on the Monday, February the 13th, will be a leadership meeting right here. And then on Sunday, the 26th of February, there'll be a congregation meeting directly following the worship service. And again, that's a continuance of, of, of the wise cards, and they are available from both Bond, Mary Sue, and Mary Paul. Any other announcements? Yes, Susan. This morning in Sunday school, I'll come up after, we discovered that we have some basic um, Sunday school supplies that we could use. So I made up a couple of index cards that if anybody would be willing to help us with them, they're simple, they're not too expensive items, just come see me and I'll be happy to share a card with you and we would appreciate the help and the donations of the of the, the, uh, the supplies for our class. Great. Thank All you. Right. Help out for that, uh, which is a great segue for what we're about to do. Good. Well, on behalf of the Montana Baptist Church, we present to you a Bible. So, Courtney, this is for you. Emily, this is for you. And Cora, this is for you also. This is God's Word, and we want you to use them, study them, 
overlooked and reading. I know that this one here doesn't read quite yet, but maybe Big Sister can read to her. All right. All right. Let's have a word of prayer, and then we'll follow up with the, with the docs on this here. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we would just ask that these Bibles, the word of Almighty God, be an enlightenment, an encouragement, a source of peace and a source of comfort, a source of strength to these three young ladies. Lord, be with them. Whenever they open up your word, may they receive a blessing through the moving and the operation of the Holy Spirit as it opens up the words to them. Lord, may your word be a light onto their path, a light throughout their entire life. May they follow what is in God's word and be true and honest and obey your world and your way. And Lord, we would ask that each of us here this day, as we have an opportunity to gather together to praise and give you glory and honor in this day, in this house of worship, may each of us reflect upon what's in God's word and may it occur to us that we should also Open up God's word. Read and obey. And Lord, we thank you for the time here this morning as we gather in worship, whether it be in song, spoken word, or in just reflection. We worship you, for you alone are worthy of our praise. In Jesus' mighty name, my prayer.
you may be seated. What a comfort to know is that his eye, his, whatever a sparrow falls, he knows, and whatever we lose, one of the hairs of our head, he knows. He watches over us. Jamie, you have a song for the Lord. You. We got peace like a river. Mm -hmm. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river.
powerful song this morning. With our scripture reader come this morning. I was watching in that mirror to them little girls back there singing their little hearts out. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Scripture today is 2 Peter 1, 1 to 8. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who through the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ, have received a faith as precious as ours, grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these, through these he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in a divine nature and escape the corruption of, in the world caused by evil desires. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to your goodness, knowledge, and to the knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord add his blessing. Thank you, Joy. As you remember from last week, some of this might say, well, that sounds familiar. Well, we, we made it through the first couple of verses, one through three, and then we decided because it was just, you know, God's word is too precious and too revealing to just to have to rush through because we have a time that we have to do finish up one. And the same is true with uh, where we're at today. This might go all over into the third week. It just might. Uh, depends on how the Lord moves. But uh, there's just so much here. Here we see, we left off of chapter 3, or excuse me, verse 3. And uh, Peter here is the as we remember, he declares himself as both a servant and an apostle. And that's, if we declare that's the way that it has to be in that order. You have to be a servant first before you can become a, an apostle. Which an apostle, as you remember, hears from the Lord and leads the church in that direction through the will of God. Here Paul, uh, Peter is uh, indeed saying that to, He's asking that the, the, their faith be multiplied to the individuals that he wrote this letter to. And he's saying, I want, you, I want you to have more. I want you to have more. And we, that which he wanted more to be was grace and peace and the knowledge of the Lord. And we talked about some of the things that, you know, we need to know who God is. And we know, need to know that God knows us. And we left off there at chapter, or excuse me, verse 3, and it starts up and picks up here in, in verse number 4. Whereby we are given unto us an exceedingly great and precious promise. Promises, you see. There's an S on the end of that promise. You know, it's just not salvation. It's salvation plus other precious things that are when we accept the Lord as our Savior, Peter is saying there, you know, he had, whereby we are given exceeding and precious promises. What's precious to us? What do we declare in our, in our lives? Something that's precious. Or where do we place great value on something? Maybe it's an archive that belonged to your great-great-grandfather or grandmother. Oh, this is so precious. You know, after your generation is gone, there's going to say, well, why did they hang on to this chunk? <laughs> it may be precious to you, but to someone else, it, 
And it's worthless. But Peter is declaring that we have exceedingly ex precious promises. Yes, we have the promise of salvation. Yes, that precious gift that God gave to humanity is so precious that we need to, to grow with it. We need to respect it. We need to appreciate it. We need to go above and beyond what we think of as just, oh, okay, that's a gift. I'm going to set it off to the side. No, we cannot do that. It must mean something to us. Paul says, excuse me, Peter said, I'm going to get, I'm going to, get, I'm going to have to write Peter right across this window. Whereby we are exceedingly great and precious promises. That by these, that's plural, by these, we might be partakers. Now that word partakers, when you, when you read God's word, we can sometimes skim over the line of what a partaker is. You know, so, but you, when you look at it, you get the full meaning of it. We are partakers. We are sharers. We are an associate. We have compan a companion. We have fellowship. You know, it's just not a casual, yeah, I know, you know, or, or, yeah, I'm the partaker of that. You know, it means something to us. We share in it. We, we have fellowship with it. We have partakers of what? The divine nature. That nature that was foreign to us before salvation, before we said yes to Jesus Christ. That divine nature was not in us. Divine nature, when we came into this world, we had two natures. We had the human nature, and we have the sin nature. And the sin nature, as you know, goes clear back to the Garden of Eden. It started in the Garden. And the Apostle Paul, in Romans, declares this. Because a sin entered into the world, that was put us at enmity with God. So in Romans chapter 6 and 23, it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. You see, the death that Adam and Eve, not only physical death, but that was spiritual death. In other words, being absent from God. God can't look upon sin. God can't look upon Man in a sinful state. God looks at us who have accepted Jesus Christ and he can look upon us because he sees us through the, the, the blood of Jesus Christ. And so that one's mine. You see, that divine nature that was implanted into us when we accepted Jesus Christ as the working of the Holy Spirit, now resides in, and you remember from the Old Testament, you know, the, the Holy Spirit was always there and will always be there from creation until throughout eternity. It would come and go. A special uh, emphasis was like you know, David and Goliath, the opening of the Red Sea. You know, all those miracles were performed by the Holy Spirit. But then it didn't stay. But that didn't happen at Pentecost. In Acts, the Holy Ghost now resides within us. What once was on the outside, now is on the inside. You see, we have that implanted divine nature. Now we're a three-part nature. We have a human nature, we have a sin nature, and we have the divine nature. The divine nature should take preference over the sin nature. The sin nature is still there, and it will always be there until we're redeemed by God. 
The sin nature, it's there, but it should be dormant. You know, it's like a volcano. Well, that volcano has been in dormant for how many hundreds of years? But every once in a while, you might get a little bit of a tremor. Or you might even get a puff of smoke comes up through it. That lets you know that that sin nature and that volcano are still active. We are partakers of that divine nature. As we look at 1 Peter 1 and 23, it says, We having been born again, not a corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. When we accepted Christ as our Savior, we are the divine nature that now resides within us, we become regenerated. We become regene, our spiritual well-being. He changes our DNA, our spiritual DNA. No longer do we want to do the things that we used to do under the, the sin nature, which the stuff that we thought we wanted to do because we didn't know any better. The divine nature now becomes rules and reigns. In Romans chapter 6, verse 12 said, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies, that you should obey it, and the lust thereof. Well, that's a promise. That's a very precious promise. And the next couple of words on this, in this verse of chapter 4, has a lot to say. That you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Having escaped the corruption. Because we are partakers of the divine nature. Our name is written down in glory. We will not be subject to the things to come. We've escaped that. The corruption that is in the world. Do you know that corruption comes from the inside? Corruption starts in the heart of man, on regenerated man, on saved man. And I'm speaking as man in general, both male and female. We've escaped that because we are partakers of the divine nature, the Holy Spirit. And what are some of the, the things that are corrupt? Well, Galatians has something to say about that. Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 through 17. Here Paul is speaking to the church at Galatia. I say that walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. Those, that passage right there is that, that we struggle with things. You know, Paul even said, you know, the things that I should do, I don't do, and the things that I don't do, I should Well, anyway, it was getting, I got it backwards, but, you know, we all have them struggles. Any of us here say, well, I don't struggle with anything. Well, you just told a big whopper of a lie. So we struggle with stuff. Some of it hangs on for a long time. Some of it we can't, we can't shut off. You know the struggles. We see them every day. But here, the corruption that starts with the, the works of the flesh. They are evident. Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousy, Outbursts of wrath, self-ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, revelries, and if that wasn't in the list, and the like, Paul adds. Those are the things Paul says later on in that same verse. Those that practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. 
You see, corruption starts in the heart of mankind. And it has, a, it has an effect. And we can see that. It's called pollution. Now, I'm not talking about environmental pollution. I'm talking about the corruption that pollutes the entire world. We see it live on our, our television screens. We read about it. The atrocities and things that take place, not only in our own communities, but communities worldwide. The hatred, the murders, the, all the all of those things that were just listed, it's there. It's polluting the world. And I just, in my studies, I came across this, this statement, and uh, I said, there's a new religion that if we clean up the environment, it will produce nicer and kinder people. And this commentary was written over 40 years ago. And we don't take long to see how long that, how that applies here today. Oh, if we can just get everything nice and clean, everybody will then just be kinder and nicer. Not as long as they are still corrupt. Besides this, we have escaped all of that, Peter says. Besides this, giving diligence, in other words, attention, responding to, being responsible for, to add to your virtue, to your faith virtue. Now we talked about virtue last, yes, last week. Virtue in and of itself is standing up for something that is correct. Knowing, the, knowing what's morally right and acting that way. Moral excellence. A desirable quality. We're going to add to our faith virtue. And we're going to add to our virtue knowledge. Virtue is to stand up and be able to state what you know to be true. You see... We can't have it both ways. We can't have two masters. We're either going to love one and hate the other or love and hate one and love the other. We can't go through life sitting on the fence because the devil owns the fence. As we look at the things that, that are unfolding, we see that knowledge, virtue works in virtue and knowledge, virtue knowledge. In other words, we're to grow. We're to grow. We can't stay infants forever. We can't stay little forever. Peter puts it this way in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18 says, But grow in the grace and the knowledge. Of, a, of the Lord and, and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. Jesus wrote this, Come unto me, who all you are heavy, labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Peter's saying we are to grow in grace and knowledge. Jesus says, come to me and learn from me. Knowledge. Growth. Did you ever ask your little kid, what do you want to be when you grow up? Of course, the answers vary. And as you know, we never stop growing. So to the individual, what do you want to be when you grow old? Alive. Yeah. So we're to continue to grow. We are expected to grow. And that knowledge that God gives us through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, we're to grow. Wow. I wish I had another half hour. <laughs> but what 
what we've covered so far today. There are precious promises, more than just salvation. There's more for us than just saying yes to Jesus. Jesus loves me, this I know. Some folks have said that's all I need to know. Well, yeah, that's good theology. You know, we didn't come out of the womb and we didn't stay babies for the rest of our lives. We are to grow and to learn. Knowing that the precious promises, because we are partakers, that we have accepted Christ as our Savior, we now have the implanted dwelling of the Holy Spirit within us. And we can't serve two masters. We can't serve the world in Jesus Christ. And there's even a move afoot where we can't blend the two, even from even if it makes an influence on, on where you work. You can't bring Jesus into you place of work. And it shouldn't, some folks think that it shouldn't guide your decisions that you make in life. At least not where you work. Which is wrong. We're to grow. Knowing that yeah, when the trumpet of the Lord sounds or when we come to the Lord through end of life, will be changed. The sin nature will be gone. We can't stand in front of the Lord with sin in our mortal bodies. The mortal will put on immortality. The corrupt corrupt will put on incorruption. Paul writes that to the church of Corinth. So we have something to look forward to. We've got a lot of promises. Precious promises. And we, we get, the closer we grow with the Lord, the more that we know about him, those things become very important to us. They become precious. You know, we're expected to grow. It'd be like the contractor that lays one cement block and says, okay, now I have a garage. <laughs> or you take a, a 9 by 12 pan and you put flour in it and you say, okay, now I have a cake. Does it work that way? Yeah. No. Neither does it if we don't become diligent and responsible <coughs> and expand our knowledge and our love of Jesus Christ. The song that we say, here I am, Lord. Send me. Send me. I hope you took those words to that song to heart. And I guess we're going to have to finish up next week. I can't believe that. But if we were due it all one time, I'd be here for an hour and a half. But join us now. As we, number 617, near to the heart of God. You know, that's one of the things that when we become a, a believer and we have that knowledge, we have a partaker of the Holy Spirit in us. We want it to multiply, we want to add to it. But we want what God wants. We want what God wants. And we need to know the heart of God. And we need to go near to the heart of God. Stand as we say. 670. <laughs> Thank you.
as we dismiss from here to our homes, Lord, that we might draw near to you, and Lord, that we might know the heart of you. Lord, we thank you so much for your word and the living testimonies of your effect on our lives. Lord, be with us till we gather again next Lord's Day, or till we meet you in the air, or if we're called to you, be with us now. May we gather together next Lord's Day without the absence of one. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen.